Hey everybody, I'm TJ Van Toll from the Kendo React team, and today we're going to take a look at the Kendo React charting library. The Kendo React charts are a series of just really easy to use and extensible APIs for adding charts to your React applications. And today I'm going to show you how they work. We'll take a look at what they are and how to use them by incorporating a few of them into a real world React application. So let's get started. All right, what you're seeing here is my development environment, and I have up my text editor as well as a half-built React dashboard app up in my browser. Now I have this app divided up into panels, and you'll see that the panels are also reflected here in my source code. And what I want to do is add two new charts to two panels that I have some CSS already in place to position up here above this data grid. Now, the first step to use the Kendo React charts is to install its NPM package and dependencies, which you can do with this command that I'll show you where to find in the documentation later so that you don't have to memorize all this or type it out by hand. Now that we have these packages installed, let's open up the file that controls this top panel, which is going to be this performance panel file. And to get a chart up and running, we're first going to have to import the various APIs from that NPM package that we just installed. And with that done, all you have to need to do is come down to the markup for this component. And I'm going to paste in a bit of code that's going to create our very first chart. We'll start this app back, app back up and refresh our browser. And there is our first chart. Each kind of React chart must have a series, and that's essentially going to tell the library which type of chart that you want to render. You can have multiple series, so series items. So for example, if I wanted a completely different line here, I could duplicate this and put another line on my chart. Perhaps I wanted to show line or bar charts in here. I could sort of get creative. There's some other different types I could throw in here. And really, even at this point, this is a pretty good showcase of the real benefits of using the Kendo React charting library, because this is what, just a small handful of lines of code. And we already have a pretty nice looking chart in our app with a pretty decent set of animations. But we're just getting started because there's a ton that we can do to customize this chart. So for example, I could start by giving this chart a title. And I'm also going to switch this app up to get some data from a backend to make it feel a little more real worldy. And because this is coming back in an arbitrary amount of time, I'm also going to add a little bit of code to switch the opacity from one to zero based off where we have data so that I get a nice little loading animation. So if I do like a hard refresh of this app, you can see I get the opacity coming in and I get some more real world numbers that appear on this chart. The next thing I want to do is customize the axis or axes of these charts. Now, each chart you use, and this is broader than just kind of React, but each chart is going to have both a value axis, which is going to be this y axis here, and this is going to be numeric data, as well as a category axis, which is down here. And kind of React actually can't generate labels for this because what needs to appear here is going to be specific to the data set that you're using. Now, in this case, this is a fictitious da dashboard for a mutual fund, and this data is supposed to be yearly figures, aka this is a, a dollar amount for each year that this fund is in existence. And so to show this data, what I'm going to do is pass in a chart category axis. So again, the category axis is going to be this axis down here. And I'm going to use that to pass in some labels to label what this data is supposed to represent. And I'm hard coding this for the sake of example, but most of the time in the real world, this data is probably also going to come from your backend or your API. But I do like spelling it out here just so you can get a sense of just how easy this is to use and how easy it is to implement in your applications. And with that, in just eight or so lines of code, we already have a pretty decent looking chart for this application. And there are a lot of additional things that you can do to customize. And to show a few additional options, I'm actually going to switch over to a second panel that we'll use to add a brand new chart. And this time, we're going to go with a pie chart. So you'll see that I already have a number of the imports in here to save us a bit of time. And I'll head down to the markup, and I'll paste in a little bit of code. This code is going to look pretty familiar. This is again a chart. I again have a title. I again have a series. 
The only real difference is that the type of this data is pi, which is going to give this, as you might expect, pi layout. And the format of the data is actually under the hood a little bit different as well. Kendi React in this case is expecting a key value pairs essentially where the category key has the name of the categories and the value has the number amounts that should appear within the pi. And you can customize these property names if they're different on the JSON that you happen to be using. There are a couple things different though. For example, with the pie chart, you'll notice that your chart automatically got a legend. But this is again customizable. So if I wanted to get rid of this legend, I could head in here and set the visible, visible property of the chart legend to false which hides it. I do like the legend showing up, so I might also just change the position of this thing because I personally think this legend looks the best when it's on the bottom. You'll notice that Kendra React provides really excellent TypeScript support, so you get a lot of this code complete to help you with these sorts of implementations as well. And one last feature I want to show you is also how to add tooltips. As you'll notice that right now, this chart doesn't actually show the specific values for each sort of uh, chunk out of these pies. And as you might guess from our previous examples, adding a tooltip is again as easy as adding a new component into our chart, which in this case is going to be chart tooltip. By default, the tooltip is going to show the value of the segment of data, which is usually what you want. But this is again totally customizable. For example, one thing you can do is provide a render function that will let you have total control over what gets rendered within the tooltip, whether it's different text or even a completely different HTML markup pattern. So for this example, the only change I want to make is really quite simple. I basically just want to add a percentage sign as this is percentage data that I happen to be viewing. So I can add a render function. I get the value in here through a point props. And I just append a simple percentage sign to this. And I get a nicer looking display within my tooltip. And once again, in like maybe a dozen lines of code, we can have a pretty nice looking chart for our dashboard application. Now, I've mentioned a few times that we're only just scratching the surface of what you can do with the Kendo React charting library. And to show you what I mean, let's head to the charts documentation, which you can find at telework.com slash kendo react UI, clicking on this docs and demos link, and then clicking here for charts. By scanning the Kendo React documentation, you can get a rough idea of all the things you can do with these charts including different series types. For example, you can build things like donut charts, box plots, bullet charts, polar charts, radar, scatter plots, waterfalls, and more, and a whole lot of chart features, including some of the things we covered like legends and tooltips, but also things like crosshairs, panes, various types of chart selections. There's really a ton that you can do. And notice how each chart type and feature includes a live demo that you can run and also view the source so that you can copy and paste the code into your own applications. Each demo also has a toggle that lets you view the code in JavaScript or TypeScript, depending on your preference. And one last big reason to use the Kendo React charting library is that it's part of Kendo React, a library with a ton of modular UI components that you can use in your applications. In fact, if we go back to our app, the reason these charts fit in so well, just design-wise with the rest of this app, is that the rest of these components are all kind of React widgets, including the data grid, the panel bar, the drawer, the app bar, the avatar, and really everything else. Overall, the Kendo React charting library is a comprehensive and easy to use solution for any React application. To use the Kendo React charts, you'll need to start a free trial of Kendo React which you can do at telerk.com slash kendo react UI. Your free trial gives you access to all of Kendo React, as well as our support resources in case you have any questions or need any help along the way. Once you get started, find the charts getting started page on the documentation, as it has the installation instructions that I referred to earlier that it'll help you get up and running fast. So try Kendo React out and best of luck with your applications.